What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We've gonna have, uh, we've gonna have, we're gonna have a lot of fun today building a bang for the buck AMD gaming rig. And when I say bang for the buck, I don't mean that it's gonna cost like 20 bucks. What I mean is that it's gonna be a reasonably priced machine that is all about getting the best value for the dollar. And we're doing this stream in partnership with Micro Center. Micro Center has 25 brick and mortar locations across the US and they've got an online store and it's an absolutely great place to go to build anything from a tricked out gaming rig all the way down to something more reasonable like what we're going to be doing today and if you check out the link below they've actually got a sweet promo where you can get a 32 gig flash drive and 32 gig micro sd card for free in store no purchase necessary that's right it's crazy but limit of one per customer so the build starts today with the case because that was the only thing that I couldn't really go shopping for at Micro Center. Now you might have noticed, I don't have anything else. That's because today is all about the in-store experience. Starting with something we don't have footage for, hit me with that CPU. If you don't hit my hand, I won't catch. Wow, what a good throw. You know what? I take back what I said before. I feel like you are qualified to, to play this part today. We're gonna be starting with a Ryzen 3 31 100. This is basically the way to go, <clears throat> assuming you can actually find one in stock, basically the way to go for a value for the dollar brand new gaming rig today. It uses AMD's Zen 2 architecture, so that means that it's quite a bit faster than their, um, well, how do we put this, than their first attempt at Ryzen. And it's got four processing cores, meaning that basically any gaming application is gonna have all that it really needs and that's gonna be true probably for at least the next few years. In terms of cooling, we're going with a stock cooler. Hit me with that, oh yeah. Because the reality of it is guys, as much as we love to show off, you know, fancy, sexy coolers and you know, talk about like the lowest possible temps, um, when you're running at stock speed or you're running like a quad core CPU these days, you don't really need any of that. And AMD in particular has done an absolutely fantastic job of their stock cooler design for their Ryzen processors. Like these things are quiet, they keep them cool, they are super easy to install thanks to AMD's clip-based mounting system. And some of them even have like RGB lighting and stuff, which is pretty sick. All right, so that's it for the things we don't have footage of me shopping for. Uh, let's have me go shopping for a motherboard. Woo! Is there audio in these clips or do I just talk over them? Hmm, what should I get? Maybe, uh, how about this A520M DS3H motherboard? Oops, I dropped it. <laughs> Right, okay, so there's a global pandemic, you know, small matter, and if I were to actually go shopping at Micro Center, I would have to quarantine for two weeks when I get there, go shopping, get on a plane, <clears throat> quarantine for two weeks, and then film this video. So we actually had one of our friends at Micro Center do the, <laughs> the footage of actually walking around in the store picking the parts. So I, I promise you that these are going to be very amusing because that one was hilarious. What did they film that on, a potato? It looks so bad. <laughs> like we're coming to you guys live and I think it still looks better than their pre-recorded footage. That's okay. Micro Center specialty is really like computers and electronics and stuff like that. It's not, you know, creating the world's greatest work of cinema. So let's run through why we went with an A520 board. Compared to AMD's even budget, hold on, let me get this. Ah, sorry, one second here. There we go. Compared even to AMD's budget B550 chipset, the A520 is even lower end, meaning that you do give up support for PCI Express Gen 4. But if there's anything that we've learned over the last little bit, actually, have you guys seen that video yet? Shoot, I don't think that video's out yet. So Anthony put together a really great video that's gonna be uploaded to the channel soon about the performance of PCI Express Gen 3 versus PCI Express Gen 4. And what we found was that it actually doesn't make that big of a difference, even going all the way up to something like an RTX 3090 or a, uh, a Radeon 6900 XT. 
So people are like, uh, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. There are some interesting things in that video. Even knowing that, though, it's really worth a watch. But the point is, if we know that the CPU is going to be at the heart of this system, basically for the foreseeable future, I have no problem going for something like a budget uh, A520 board. So we're not going to be doing like a ton of overclocking or anything like that. But in terms of expansion, we've got PCI Express 16X for our graphics card. We can add a couple more add-in cards. You've got an M.2 slot for high-speed storage. And the only area that I would expect this to cause any kinds of problems in the future is if you were expecting to rely on direct storage to dramatically accelerate your game loading speeds or, um, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's basically it. And the thing about direct storage is we don't even know yet if it's going to have any kind of real world impact on performance. So let's go ahead and, uh, or, okay. We think it will have a real world impact on performance on PC. We just don't know how much, okay? And it definitely won't be in all games because games do have to explicitly support it. So give me that overhead and let's go ahead and get a CPU installed here. Chase? Yep. Chase? Hello? Chase? You got this. All right, we got cool. It. So AMD, oh man, not lighting. Uh, hmm. Well, nothing we can really do about it. So there you go. It's a, uh, it's a white motherboard now. Uh, Andy, we're on the overhead. You can uh, at ease, soldier. Andy's too hardcore. He's oh. like, he's like standing like this. He's like, I'm ready. I'm always ready. I'm, I'm, you want, you want I'm freaking ready, man. All right. So we lift up the arm. We just will line up the little gold triangle with the, you know what, sure, switch over to Andy. If he's going to be there ready, we might as well use him. So we got our little gold triangle right here. Do you have a zoom lens on there? Oh, what a pro. Look at this pro. Andy, he's the Andy man. That's why we call him that. I think I'm the only one who calls him the Andy man. All right, so we put the gold triangle in the little plastic. Did someone drop this CPU? This CPU is chipped. What the crap? Dang it, you guys. That's not a gold triangle. That's a chip. I mean, that... That happens to be where the gold triangle was, but jeebus, you guys. Oh, man. For those of you wondering, like, what the deal is with the chipped CPU, that's not, like, from Micro Center. We can't, we can't get more Ryzen 3 3100s right now. This is the same one that we did our review with. We've just built PCs with it. Sorry. Uh, we've built PCs with it over and over and over again because it's the only one we have. That's how we got the chip. That's how, yeah, that's how it got the chip. Well, it wasn't from me. I didn't do that. I have never dropped that particular CPU. No, you dropped it. I did not. I did not drop that particular CPU. Uh, I need some thermal compound here, real quick, Styles. That's okay. Fortunately, I'm in the PC build corner. Normally, your stock cooler would come with thermal compound pre-applied, but because this is a CPU and stock cooler that we've used many times. What the hell happened to this tube of Noctua <laughs> thermal paste? I barely touched it. And I've got this gigantic glob of thermal compound. Someone broke off the nozzle. Look at this, Andy. The nozzle's broken. You got this. You got this. Oh, am I a little close? You got it. You got it. Yeah, look at the. It's just a hole in there. Oh, man, that is... That is going to make a mess. I feel for whoever on the logistics team has to, has to take this system apart and clean up the CPU. All right, let's go ahead and pop over one of these hooks. There you go. Put that on there. There you go. There you go. All right. All right, then we're going to do another one. you got to give AMD credit. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. They have had the same fundamental mounting mechanism for like, oh, Lordy, like 15 years or something like that. All right, so we just got to... It used to be sort of similar, but worse. I'll talk about that in a minute. Oh, there we go. There we go. I was doing it wrong. So you just pop that over there. There we go. And crank her tight. Now, this is a great story. The way AMD's mounting mechanism used to work... Hold on, where is it? It was cheaper to manufacture this way, I'm assuming, because there's no, like... There's no smart, you know, engineering reason why they would have wanted to do it this way. Is there not a slot screwdriver anywhere in this drawer? You've got to be kidding me. I mean, not that you need a flathead for building a PC normally, but, but you used to. So the way it used to work is instead of this, um, well, it had like an arm on it, but there was like a little, a little lip that came off of this metal thing right here, and it had like a little recess in it. And what you would do is you would put a slot screwdriver in it, and you would push down, 
and then go like this to get the hook over the plastic clip. And let me tell you, the number of people I knew who slipped and jammed a flathead screwdriver into the PCB of their motherboard, well, clearly prompted AMD to change that mounting mechanism. Anyway, it's a lot better now. Now it's really good. Uh, but, oh, mm, let's go ahead and plug in our CPU fan. So we just find the one labeled CPU fan right here. Plug in that four pin connector. Mm, nice PWM control. I remember when that was like a fancy feature you had to like kind of, oh, couldn't take that for granted. And now it's time to go shopping for some RAM. Mm, what should I get? Ooh, Trident Z looks pretty good. Oh, look at that. It's all, why don't I try and get the light reflected in it? What are you even doing? What are you doing? Wait, what just, ah! Oh, fantastic. Look at that. Wow, Micro Center shipping is so fast. It's, it's, it's very, it's very fast, uh, fast styles shipping that they use. Um, I can't even, I can't even tell what I'm looking at in that footage. Uh, okay, so we did splurge for the extra on RGB apparently. That is absolutely optional if you're going for maximum bang for the buck, but I still do highly recommend G-Skills Memory. They just do an absolutely bang up job, not just of having great prices, but also ensuring excellent compatibility. Over the years that we've been making tech videos, we have always known that if we turn to G-Skill, if they say it's gonna run at that speed, then like probably will and that doesn't when I say it out loud that doesn't really sound very impressive but you can't take it for granted there are lots and lots of memory companies out there that will ship RAM kits that are like yeah they will run at that speed but like maybe and I'm not talking about like stock speed actually I am kind of talking about stock speed man we've had terrible experiences with RAM sticks that just have terrible compatibility I remember back when we were still working out of the house, we had, uh, here, I can just talk over while I'm installing the RAM here. Uh, back when we were still working out of the house, we had, uh, we sent a request to G-Skill, and we were much smaller at the time, so they were like, uh, really, you guys? For, I think it was 24 sticks of, like, their highest end memory in their highest capacity. And they were like, um, guys, that's a lot of outlay. Like, you just asked for like a couple grand worth of memory freebies. And I was like, I know. And like, look, because of taxation complications, I can't promise you that I'm even gonna do anything with it. But your RAM is like the only thing we found that just works in everything. This was back in the DDR3 days when RAM compatibility wasn't as good as it is today. Your RAM is the only thing we found that just like works with everything, we need it for our test benches. And if we need it for test benches, I pretty much guarantee you it's gonna end up on camera a lot. And they were like, oh, fine, 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 fine. But the point of the story is just that G-Skill Memory, we've had a ton of really great experiences with over the years, and I can't say the same about everyone else. So whether it's just working at all at stock speed or actually running at the XMP profile, love G-Skill Memory. Uh, but you don't have to spend extra on the RGB. With that said, I don't think the Trident Z RGB actually even costs that more than like a Flare X or something like that, or a Rip Jaws X or whatever. So uh, Matt's given me like one of these. Does it cost a little bit more, like five, 10 bucks? It's like within 10. Within 10? Yeah, okay. But you don't have to do it. But what you do have to do is get a power supply. Let's go shopping. <laughs> Bring on the potato. Oh, look at this. I'm walking around, got my potato. Wait, they're not gonna do any like actual like shopping for me? They gotta look at some other stuff. I mean, we got C Sonic up in there. We got the. Well, are you gonna throw it or not? Ow! What's wrong with you? Jeez. You're not past your probation yet, are you? Oh, that's. Is he? Are you sure? Have you been here three months? You're in your last week of probation. Interesting. Well, that's good to know. Let's see how hard Matt throws things at me for the rest of this stream here. And let's take a look at our power supply. Let's do a little overhead, overhead camera unboxing. Shall we, Chase? Hit me up. Hit me up with that overhead cam. This is the C750. It's an ATX power supply. Good job, NZXT. This actually, no offense to NZXT, probably isn't what I would have picked for like 
an absolute bang for the buck machine. But if I was willing to spend a little bit extra on something that I'm gonna take forward with me for multiple computer builds, then it becomes a lot more reasonable of a value proposition. It's 80 plus bronze, it's <clears throat> fully modular, so there's our modular interface there and all of our modular cables. And those are features that, you know what, you could just go for like an EVGA B series if you don't need them. You could save yourself a buck, but they are features that are nice to have. Well, 80 plus, wait, did I say 80 plus bronze? I'm sorry, this one's 80 plus gold. So EVGA's B series is 80 plus bronze. So you could go down to a B series if you don't need higher efficiency or you don't need a fully modular interface. And that would be just fine to power the rig that we're doing today. But if you want something that you can carry forward with you for the next five, 10, potentially even more years based on how long the ATX standard continues to keep kicking around, then something like this wouldn't be a terrible idea. Let's go ahead and pop that in there. Actually, can you switch back over to Andy for me, please, Chase? Uh, let's get my... How did they... Okay, I love you guys, NZXT, but what the, what the crap are you guys doing? Look at this. Look at this. They got them backwards. Look, come look, Andy. See, they got them, they got them backwards. The way it's like cable managed out of the box, it looks like it's supposed to go in like that, but this one uh, goes over here. And this one goes over here. You got your literal wires literally crossed. <laughs> there you go. All right. I mean, it's not the end of the world, I guess, but we made it work. There you go. All right. What else are we going to need in terms of cables? We'll need a. Uh... What are you guys even? What are you guys even talking about? Twitch chat is so Siri. I just I can't I can't even I can't even get it. Um, oh, do you want to turn the stream volume up just a touch, Chase, if you haven't already? Yeah, I'm watching Floatplane. All right, cool. Floatplane's the only chat that we trust when it comes to giving feedback on the, on the stream settings. Twitch chat's just like, oh, we don't even know what we're doing. They give so much conflicting information. I just, I'm sorry, Twitch. I can't trust you. I can't trust you. That time, that time has come and gone. Our relationship cannot be rebuilt anymore, unfortunately. All right. Uh, yeah, t a float plane's like, yeah, it's a little quiet. All right, all right, cool. Why is my YouTube live chat not even working? That's ridiculous. I mean, not that with 21,000 people watching, I'd even be able to monitor it in any meaningful way. Uh, all right, rest of the cables that we're using. We're going to use our 8-pin CPU connector. One of the other nice things that's good about modular power supplies, especially with the, um, just like the phenomenon that has sort of popped up over the last, I'd say probably the last three years or so, is that they're more easily adapted to future standards because you can actually just plug some other completely different thing in. And you don't have to rely on the first party manufacturer to provide those cable kits anymore. So if I was going to keep a power supply for a really long time, and I don't know if some new connector is going to show up, it is nice to have a fully modular power supply. I'm not saying that will happen. I'm just saying that it absolutely is a possibility. Hey, there's YouTube chat. Wow. Literally 30% of the messages are held for a review because they're getting picked up by YouTube's spam stuff. That's crazy. Uh, oh, everybody's talking about uh, Kyle from Bitwit. So Kyle uh, uploaded a video today um, talking about how his relationship ended. And um, I'm not at liberty to share any details, but I just want to say, you know, um, I've I, have, I have talked to him about it. Um, and I just want to say, like, you know, what he needs is, is your support. So if you're not already subscribed, not just to Bitwit, but also he actually just launched a new channel where he's going to be doing some vlogs and stuff. Frankly, I always thought he was better at vlogging than reviewing technology anyway. So uh, make sure you go subscribe to his vlog channel as well. And our heart goes out to Kyle. It's a really rough time. You know, no matter what the circumstances are when it comes to a marriage separation, it's not easy. And, you know, it's very challenging for him. So just make sure you guys are giving him lots of love, lots of support, subscribing to Bitwit. More importantly, subscribing to his vlog channel because if we can get his vlog channel to, like, really, like, 
hockey stick and take off, then maybe I'll be able to lose a competitor in the tech space, which would be great for everyone involved, quite frankly. Um, why don't we go ahead and go, <laughs> go shopping for our next component? OK, I'm just kidding. I love Kyle. He's a float plane creator. Oh, yeah, you could subscribe to him on float plane if you wanted to like really support him. Um, I, just, I, love, I love teasing that guy. He's a good guy. Known him a long time. We literally climbed a mountain together, OK? Kyle's in the Highlander crew. Um, oh, I guess we can install the power supply real quick here. I'm just going to get our case. This is an H510. Nice little mid-tower case from NZXT. <clears throat> I actually have no idea what some of the parts rationale was for this build. The original title for the video was um, like shopping at Micro Center Stream or something like that. And I was like, eh, I don't know. I think we need to just find some kind of you know, other, other story. So it's a, it's a bang for the buck, bang for the buck build now. The H510, yeah, it's reasonably priced. If I was going for absolute maximum bang for the buck, I'd probably save a few more bucks and have a little bit less bang on my case. But, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's up to you. It's up to you how you want to spend your hard-earned dollars. Um, to be clear, like, it's it's a it's a really good it's a really good value if you care about features like you know tempered glass side panel right got that tempered glass hold on it doesn't look very clear it doesn't look very tempered glassy but uh, hold on there we go it really does make such a big difference all those years it drove me absolutely crazy I was actually way out in front of the tempered glass side panel like trend uh, so all those years that you'd have like. $500 cases with these disgusting acrylic side panels on them. And they look good for like four seconds. But because acrylic attracts dust, like way more than something like metal or glass does, it would look disgusting in like a day. And then you'd go to wipe it, and it would be covered in micro scratches, and then it would look disgusting literally forever for the rest of its existence. Um, so I actually replaced on my personal Silverstone TJ07, I replaced the stock glass with, it wasn't tempered glass, which <clears throat> might be a little, a little dangerous or whatever, uh, but I replaced the stock side panel with glass, and then in place of the holes around the outside where the acrylic was attached, I just put like decorative little nubbins, I just glued them on there <laughs> so that uh, it wasn't clear that they weren't actually doing anything. All right, <clears throat> both side panels come off on this one? Yes, they do. Um, why the sticker on the glass and not on the peel? Uh, wow, that's actually a really good question. Caution, tempered glass handled with care. I don't know, maybe because someone might actually like to leave that sticker on. I mean, we all know that monster. Everyone has that monster in their life that like leaves danger, caution, stickers, or like, oh man, oh man. Have you ever gone into someone's home, okay? And the first thing you wanna say is, what the hell is wrong with you, right? Okay, because you walk in and they got their living room right there and they got like a big TV, right? Nice TV, you know, got them nice speakers and their AV receiver has a big sticker on the front of it, okay? Dolby Atmos, 7.1 surround, Bluetooth, all over the front of their receiver. What's wrong with you? You take it off. That's like leaving your TV in like store demo mode instead of actually watching content. That's how wrong it is. You gotta take the sticker off. You gotta be a, you gotta be a good person. Take the sticker off. It's, it's awful. We're gonna get triggered if we go to my house. Is your, is your house full of stickers on things, Andy? Like I still have like the protective film on my fridge. You have film on your fridge. Yeah, and I also have like the uh, protective film on okay. my Sony logo Andy, on my Sony Andy, TV. Andy, discontinue speaking. I simply cannot hear it anymore. Here's what's going to go down, ladies and gentlemen. I'm actually going to be going to Andy's house. You guys know Andy. He, uh, he helps us translate whatever, whatever there's like <laughs> weird Chinese products that we're, that we're checking out. Uh, he's one of our camera operators here. He actually was instrumental in helping us. He even does sourcing for us. So he helped us get the transparent TV. Uh, he helped us get that gold uh, Galaxy Fold that we checked out, the W21 uh, on short circuit. Um, some of the like weird Chinese CPUs and stuff. 
Uh, the kickproof TV. Um, Actually, no, no. Nick arranged that through um, through Patrick, who handles our uh, our distribution. Never mind, that was before Andy's time. Anyway, Andy does a lot of stuff around here, and he, I believe, is our next Intel Extreme Tech Upgrade contestant, or well, winner really. Everyone wins. Um, we're going to be going into his house. We're going to be building like a uh, like a man cave style like gaming den in his unfinished basement. It's going to be sick. And as part of that video, this is my personal pledge. I promise to you, I will walk around Andy's house and I will peel things off, everything that I can find. I will do it. Andy? I'll make sure you got the trigger. Andy, I'm I'm doing it. I'm sorry. I won't accept no for an answer. You're getting a $5,000 upgrade courtesy of Intel. It's not even my money, but I'm going to act like it is. I'm giving you a $5,000 upgrade. I am peeling everything off everything in your house. I'm, I, will not, I will not accept it. I won't stand for it. I won't stand for it. Let's fight. <laughs> Let's fight. <laughs> All right. Um, where's my screws? Oh, no. I didn't bring a screwdriver. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hmm. Well, I've got some wired headphones, pretty useless in 2021. And I've got an Ethernet to coaxial cable adapter. Um, that was useless in any year. This is actually intended to be a video at some point. I'm trying to figure out how to stretch this out into like seven to eight minutes of content. It's just so weird. I just want to make a video about it. Um, maybe it could be just me trying to find a purpose for it for eight minutes. Uh, okay, so I do legitimately need a screwdriver, though. Maybe, uh, hmm, I, hmm, okay. Uh, okay, I will use this while Matt runs up to my office. Do you know where my screwdrivers are by any chance? Okay, so when you go into my office, right in front of you, there's that big IKEA thing full of drawers. Just keep opening drawers until you find the one with the screwdriver in it. I would like the blue and red one, please. If not that, then I'll settle for one of the orange ones. Let's go ahead and pull, put in a power supply here. So here's how to install a power supply, ladies and gentlemen. First, you put the power supply into the case. All right, a little something like that. All right. Then you put the screw into the power. Oh, dang it. Well, no. Then you actually line up the holes. Okay. So we've got our holes and our holes. Those are lined up real nice styles. Then Use your hands and your, oh, shoot, hold on, I screwed this up. Oh, man. <sighs> hold on, let me just get my tweezers here. There we go. Okay, right. How to install power supply. Hold on, get my tweezers. So you put your tweezers on the screw like this. Oh, shoot, if only I hopefully had a Swiss Army knife. Oh, one second. Okay. Hold on, I swear I can do this. Okay, maybe, maybe if you, yeah. Oop. Oh, you got to use the flat part of the, you got to use the flat part of the head to get the tweezers on. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Okay. You getting this, Andy? Yep. You getting how to install a power supply? Yep. Oh, dang it! All right, I'll 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 take the screwdriver now. <laughs> I really did think I could get in there. There we go. Okay, this is not actually going any better. There's a really interesting backstory for this screwdriver, you guys. Uh, Andy? Andy. Yeah. <clears throat> really interesting backstory for this screwdriver. Oh, I'm not at liberty to tell the story. Sorry, I, you must have misunderstood. Um, sorry, I can't. Yeah, uh, I can't really talk about it right now, but what I hope is that sometime in the future, I'll be able to tell you about the kind of unique, uh, unique prototype-like appearance of this screwdriver. You know, I uh, might be able to explain the somewhat 3D printed look and feel of it. Uh, we've got our power supply installed now. We put in those four screws. Um, yeah. You know, thanks for thanks for listening. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. Oh, by the way, um, speaking of of uh, Linus Tech Tips products, LTTstore.com. Not that I'm not that I'm really talking about like an LTT store product though. Like, 
or I wasn't, but now I am. We finally have stock. Oh, shoot, I'm wearing the old ones. We finally have stock of our new LTTstore.com underwear. So we had some people ask, hey, uh, why didn't you guys have any underwear in stock for like six months? The answer was uh, we found out that the factory conditions at the old factory we were using were not up to our standard. So we spent the last six months finding a new factory to work with that was up to our working condition standards, but that could also deliver a product to our standards. And it was a non-trivial task. So the new ones are basically I'm, OK, when I say as close as we could get to the old ones, I don't mean that they're worse. They are slightly different. So the weave of the fabric is a little bit tighter, but the feel in the hand, um, the, the like feel on the skin, the stretchability, everything else is basically bang on. Like I can't tell after I put them on, and I'm not looking at them anymore, I can't tell whether I'm wearing V1 or V2. And that was the goal. So the fit is the same. Um, so you guys can check them out, lttstore.com. We've got a few new styles. Uh, so the new three pack looks a little different. We are actually going to bring back the old styles in like another three pack for just for people that want them. But personally, I think the new three pack is going to be a fair bit less polarizing anyway. It has like a stealthy black one in there, like a cool purple one. And then it has one that kind of matches the Constellation shirt. So if you were, you know, you wanted to look all matching on like a Saturday when you're doing nothing but sitting in your chair gaming and it's not worth putting on pants, then the new pack is definitely the one to get. Where the heck did the box for the, oh. Do I not have an IO shield for this motherboard? Oh, there it is. All right, IO shield, got to install that. This is a pretty, pretty entry level board so it doesn't have like the built in IO shield. Hey Matt, do you want to, yeah, hey cool, thanks. Feels like over half the builds I do these days don't even need to install the IO shield. Ow. Yeah, you know what's kind of funny? I just noticed that's another thing that you get on entry level boards is you tend, they tend to not have support for like surround sound speakers, right? Like they only have the three audio jacks. You got your microphone, you got your um, like amplified stereo output, and then you got like your line, I think is what this one is. And it kind of made me think, so many motherboards above kind of the $60, $70 price point, maybe 80 bucks, so many motherboards above that do have the full six audio jacks at the back for like 5.1 surround. What percentage of people has ever actually hooked up 5.1 analog speakers to their computer? I really want to know. Guys, you got to hit me up in the chat. Have you ever done that? Come on, guys. Hit me. Let's go. No, no. Never. No, never. Clips for Media Ultra 5.1. OK, yes. Yes, there was. Want to switch to the overhead? Yes, there was a legitimate 5.1 PC you know, I sound think you system. You might want to do a little more shopping before you put that in. A little more shopping before I put this in? Yeah. Oh, apparently I'm supposed to go shopping before I put the motherboard in there. But hold on, I want to talk about this for a second here. Yes, between the, uh, oh shoot, Gigaworks S700, I think, was the creative product. S700 and S750 is what I want to say. And the Clips Promedia 5.1s and Promedia Ultra 5.1s. There was a time when, like, legit gaming grade surround analog speakers for PCs were absolutely a thing. That time, was 2005, 2006. That was, as the kids say, who weren't born yet, a hot minute ago. Um, <laughs> since then, it basically is not a thing anymore. I'm still, man, you know what? I've never told this story on, I've never told this story on camera before, but I think, I, think it's, I think it's finally the time to get it off my chest. I used to own a set of Clips for Media Ultra 5.1s. I loved those speakers. They like changed gaming for me. Uh, when I worked as a sales rep, I used to sell them all the time, even though they were like five, $600 computer speakers. And anyone that I could talk into it, the only, thing I, the only thing I would hear when they came back the next time was, I am so glad you talked me into that. Because compared to if I had spent another like, you know, $200 on the top of the line graphics card and another like $500 on an extreme edition or whatever, 
compared to those kinds of purchases, this changed my gaming experience so much more because it's so immersive, like feeling the rumble. Um, anyway, I had a set of them. And the reason that I got rid of them was that my then girlfriend, now wife, made me do it. And now, to be clear, she has been very accepting of my technology, let's call it a habit, you know? I don't want to use the A word, you know, but let's, let's call it a habit, my technology habit over the years. In fact, she has even supported it. So she gave me my first like really high-end case. My Silverstone TJ07 was, uh, was actually a birthday present from her. Was it birthday or Christmas? It was one of the two. It was a gift from her, though. Um, so it's not that she was like not supportive. You know, uh, I remember spending $1,000 on a platform upgrade like right around the time I started working at NCIX head office. I got myself a Core 2 Duo E6600. I got myself an Asus P5WDH digital home. Now, that was a branding that <laughs> did not stick around for Asus. Remember digital home? No. <laughs> Who cares? I got myself some DDR2 memory. Ho. Oh. Oh, that was, that was sexy. That was sexy back in the day. Uh, anyway, but the reason, the reason I wasn't allowed to have it was because my Clips for Media Ultra 5.1s were actually a gift from my previous girlfriend. Ooh, Shop yeah, Shop. yeah. And there was, let me just put it this way, there was, some, there was some bad blood there. There was some very bad blood. And I take full responsibility personally for the bad blood that existed there. Uh, but I was not allowed to have them anymore. The good news is that the way this story ends is she actually let me splurge. And to be clear, when I say let me, I don't mean like she wears the pants or I wear the pants because we actually have a functioning relationship where we discuss things and make decisions together. Um, but she, after discussing and making a decision together, let me spend, I think it was like about another thousand dollars on like a kef. Uh, 5.1 setup and then a receiver and I remember setting this up in the family room at her parents house where I was living at the time. My life sounds weirder when I recall it as a story that, and tell others than it feels. Um, anyway, when I set it up and it took up like so much space, she was totally chill with that. It was just I was not allowed to have my Promedia Ultra 5.1s anymore. That, th those, were, those were off limits. Um, but I digress. Let's go ahead and go shopping at Micro Center, shall we? Go for it. Hmm. Oh, right. Oh, snap. I did not install my SSD. So here's some SSDs. Wow, you look at that video editing. They did video editing. Dang, Micro Center. You guys did some real video editing in this thing. Oh, we got a bit of a, hold on a second. There's some latency. There's some latency on the potato. Hit me. Weak. Utterly weak. What, what are you afraid you're going to get fired if you hit me too hard with it or something? I mean, it's not like I said that. Jeez, it's ridiculous. All right, so we're going to be installing. What the crap even is this thing? I never heard of this brand before in my life. What, what, are, what are they called? Inland? I can't even see. My inventory guys put the sticker right on the thing here. Uh, what is an inland? What even is this? Okay, hold on a second, hold on a second. Let me just put my sticker somewhere else here. Uh, okay, I, I don't know what this is, so we're gonna peel the label off. Warranty void if removed, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. I just, I wanna know what it is. Inland one terabyte NVMe SSD. So it's got 3D QLC NAND, it's PCI Express Gen 3. I just wanna know if it has a DRAM cache. Oh yeah, no, never mind. it has a DRAM cache. Okay, yeah, I'm chill, I'm chill, I'm good. So four NAND packages, DRAM cache, it's probably like, fine. Uh, what controller does it use? Hold on. How is this sticker invincible? Stop. Thank you. Fizen PS5, PS5012. Okay, yeah, so whatever. Okay, so it's a Fizen controller, DRAM, cache, SSD is probably fine. All right, let's go ahead and, oh, this is nice. Hey, kudos to Gigabyte for doing what I think everyone should do and pre-installing the M.2 screw in the board. That is unless we did it for them. I'm actually not sure. All right, uh, I want to flip to the, oh no, that's, this is a better angle anyway. Okay, so we'll pop that, pop that puppy in there. Okay, there we go. 
Man, float plane chats just talking about like, I don't know what you guys are even talking about. Pentium 4 for doing some tidying at college. Oh, throw a brick at him, says Lucas is fun. Uh, okay, no, no. Matt is only supposed to throw computer hardware at me, not, not bricks. All right, am I, am I allowed to put it in the case now? Is that permitted, Chase? Man, we've got, like a, whole, we've got like a whole production crew now. It used to be we only had like camera operators and we were lucky to even have a camera operator, you know what I mean? Well, like all the quarantine content, I just had to like set up a bunch of different camera angles and like flip through them by myself with the little remote. It was a very challenging time. You know what though? I was kind of I was kind of missing the the like the solo video creation experience this weekend. And uh, what I decided to do was film a video completely myself. You know, just to challenge myself and also because my wife really wanted her computer fixed right now because in fairness to her, it has had this issue where the display wouldn't wake if the PC, not only if the PC went to sleep, but also if you powered off the display and turned it back on, it just would not get a signal. Now, some of you probably know, and so she wanted that fixed right away because it's been weeks and multiple like system configuration changes and it's still doing it. So those of you who um, are very familiar with the channel might know that the way my personal setup works at home is I've got uh, a server rack in a closet. Uh, you can go ahead and flip to the overhead. I've got a server rack in a closet and then I've got all the cabling running through a wall so that the PC, like the monitors and keyboards and mice and all the peripherals and everything uh, are completely separate from the actual computers. And what's nice about it is it keeps all the noise completely isolated, which is sweet. Oh, this is the wrong size screw. Um, the problem is that for the whole setup to function correctly, I'm relying on Thunderbolt, which as you might know on the PC side anyway, is not the most polished experience ever. And I'm gonna specifically call out ASUS here. Love ASUS, good people. I think, you know, by and large, they care about making good products and all that good stuff. But their Thunderbolt implementation on the desktop has been absolutely nothing but headaches for me every time I have messed around with it. It has been so frustrating. And not just for me, I actually have a buddy, his name's uh, Ben. Uh, Somna Music, I think is what he goes by. He streams on Twitch and stuff. Uh, so I built up a rig for him just on the weekend and I was like, hey, so Thunderbolt on PC, not perfect. I know you've got like an audio interface that you'd love to use that is Thunderbolt. Can't guarantee it's gonna work, but boy, is it ever gonna be cheaper than a Mac Pro, so I'd suggest you go for it anyway. And he's like, yeah, sure, okay. So I build him up a rig. Sure enough, I spend like a couple hours trying to get Thunderbolt working. Can't do it. He tries, he spends a few more hours trying to get working. He can't do it either. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. It's just like ASUS's BIOS is just full of a bunch of options you don't need and not full of actually working, which is what you actually want. Um, and so I tried again with an X299, X299 Deluxe 2 or something like that, I want to say. Do you want to go back to the face cam? Um, and everything worked flawlessly, immediately, until the display wouldn't wake. And I've just, I've actually, I've actually seen it before with DisplayPort in particular, where that is so weird. NZXT installed standoffs with two different threading in this case. This is a 632 up here in this, here, hold on, let me flip this up. I swear to you, this is 632 and this is M3. Why? What even the crap would inspire something like that to be done? I think that last one is M3 as well. That is, or is it 6 I can't, I can't tell looking at it. I'll just have to put a thing in here. Anyway, yeah, that last one's 632 as well. What the heck is going on here? Dang it, ends up, oh man, now I can't get it out. It just, the whole, it slid right in and now the threads are just kind of like locked. You gotta kind of push it against the side and screw it out. There you go, Magnet got it. Um, Let's get another 632 screw. That's so weird. I've never, in all my years, I've never seen that before. Pre-installed standoffs of a different threading type in one case. Uh, 
What was I talking about? Right, ASUS is Thunderbolt implementation. So I had to change it out, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do a video about this because ASUS deserves to be called out on this, and also if I have to build a computer anyway, I might as well record it. So my son helped me, and we had some fun. We built a computer. We got Mummy's Thunderbolt working properly. Good bonding experience. So yeah, it was good. So that video is going to come out, I don't know, probably in like a week and a half. We're a little bit behind on our, our target one week uh, early access float plane thing right now. So, oh, I didn't put in standoffs for these bottom two holes. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't seem like it's going to fall out of there too hard. Uh, so you'll see that, yeah, probably in about a week and a half. Uh, what's the next thing I'm shopping for? Graphics card? Okay. Well, I've got a little bit of time before that. One of the things I love about NZXT's cases, though, is that you can really tell that there's people there that have a lot of experience when it comes to PC building because they just put these little thoughtful touches in that make the whole process easier in terms of like cable management. Like this right here, it's they actually, with this pop-out, leave enough space for big, thick cables. They've got these really nice runs right here that you can use if you want, but you don't have to. You can just be lazy and chuck it there, and you won't be able to see it on the other side at all. That's not to say that like NZXT thinks you should lazily build a computer or whatever. I'm just saying that you don't have to put the effort in if you don't want to. Like this one back here is another perfect example. So your 8-pin connector for the motherboard. You can like run it through this channel and like have it be all piney. Or you can just not. Whatever. NZXT don't judge. You can just do a crappy job if you feel like it. All right, let's get out of my 8-pin. I always forget to do this. It's such a good pro tip, and I've given the tip many times, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just uh, plugging the 8-pin in the top when you have a modular power supply, using the modular cable and plugging it into the motherboard first and then running it down to the power supply unit is so much smarter. It's so much easier than trying to get your fingers in after the fact and try and get this 8-pin plugged in. Um, okay, there we go, that wasn't too bad. And then I guess the last connector we actually need is the one for the graphics card. Uh, we do have our front panel to hook up, so Andy, we're gonna have to get real, we're gonna have to get real close and intimate here so they can actually see what I'm doing. We'll start with HD audio. Boom, you might have to come closer. Closer, come closer. All right, there's our HD audio. There we go, we're gonna plug that into our F audio. The audio died, you know? There's our F audio, F audio header there. Then we got our USB Le 3. Okay, so that puppy looks a little something like that. You got your little notch right, no, oh, no, you guys can't see it. There you go, got your little notch there. Go ahead and line that up with the little notch on the top of the USB 3 doodadamajig. Okay, and plug that puppy in. Just be real careful with that one. If you accidentally mash those super skinny pins, they'll get stuck and it is a real chore getting them out of there. Oh, well, this was optimistic. Um, yep, this, has, uh, this case has a USB Type-C port on the top of it. You will not be plugging uh, that into anything, unfortunately. You know, that's something that I feel is really underserved by the market, is like front panel compatibility with motherboards. Like, does anyone even make just a USB card that you can install to plug that connector in? I'm willing to bet they don't. Like even StarTech, who makes basically everything, as long as you're willing to pay six times what it's worth. I, I don't think even they have it. So here, hold on a second. USB-C front panel PCIe. That, that's what I would search. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Maybe someone will have it. Uh, Silverstone. Yeah, if anyone was going to do it, it, could, it would be Silverstone, wouldn't it? Silverstone has it. <laughs> you nerds. Uh, the way that they've implemented it is kind of stupid, though. I love you, Silverstone. Also, it's not in stock at Amazon. Oh, that's .ca, though. There's never anything in stock at Amazon.ca. Um, yeah, so it comes off instead of being a 90-degree uh, angle connector. So like you won't, with how stiff this connector is, you wouldn't be able to install anything in the slot next to it. Let's see if Micro Center has it. I guess technically they sponsored this stream. Um, Micro Center. Da -da 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 -da. Just shopping on my phone. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so Silverstone uh, USB-C card. 
Let's see. Oh my god, their autocomplete has so many things in it. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, well, hmm. USB-C, searching for USB-C card was not a good plan because uh, it brought up card readers. USB-C PCIe. I remember finding some super weird stuff at uh, Micro Center when I went there. They've got a Vantec card. I'm willing to bet this one doesn't have the internal connector. Yeah, so the only one we found, it's not in stock. It just, it seems like such an obvious thing. Like when I'm building a PC, I don't necessarily want to spend a ton of money on a motherboard that doesn't give me any more performance or whatever. Um, but I might want to get myself, you know, a nicer case and it might have features that are not supported. It just seems like the kind of thing that could be, could be, better addressed. And I don't think I should have to spend more than like 20 bucks on that card. Oh, this is nice though. Uh, NZXT's got one of those block style front panel connector header uh, bricks. So you see it just says F panel, rip the panel. Uh, and we just plug that on like that. So with most of the major motherboard vendors, that should work just lickety snap like that. Now it's time to go shopping for everyone's, oh, this is a really nice inclusion. Thank you, NZXT. So they've got a four pole front paddle audio jack, and then they've included a four pole to dual three pole. So that, because sometimes the compatibility is not perfect. Like if you plug a three pole device into a four pole jack or a four pole device into a three pole jack, it can kind of be a nightmare. So these are, these are really handy. All right, time to go shopping for a graphics card. Wow, look at that. Oh, wow, it's jerking all over the place. Got the RTX. Wow, do they actually have RTX cards in stock? I wonder how far they had to search for uh, enough of those to, to, to have a convincing amount of stock. Okay, what? Oh! Really? I leave it wide open. You still can't, like, it's like, man. I feel like you're like you couldn't score a goal on an empty net. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That by the way, that is a heavy Canadian insult. That's like I might as well have said terrible things about his mother, sister, grandmother, daughter combined. You know, like, basically an awful person. I feel bad. I'm sorry, Matt. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that to you. That was what, sorry. What's up? Oh, after all the parts have been unveiled. Uh, check out the um, Micro Center custom PC builder and you can configure yourself a PC just like this one or totally different from this one. It doesn't have to be just like this one. That's not, that's not a requirement. You can uh, something something inventory available and in stock at your nearest Micro Center location. You can even arrange same day in store pickup for the parts um, or take it home and assemble it yourself. Micro Center doesn't care. They got you covered either way. Uh, really. Oh, pff, my talking points have a typo. Or for a free, have one of Micro Center's expert technicians assemble the computer for you. Uh, for a fee. It does, it, does, it does cost money. It does cost money. Remove before use. This is a handy feature. This is just to make sure you don't get confused when your fans don't spin. Um, it's to tell you that when the card's at idle, the fans are intended to not spin. So we've got an MSI, uh, RTX, uh, no, RTX. Oops, sorry AMD, sorry AMD. NVIDIA's branding brainwashed me. Uh, RX 5700 XT Gaming X dual fan cooler. Nice, chunky aluminum uh, fin array. We've got, how many heat pipes in there? It doesn't matter, we're gonna put this in our computer. Gonna, gonna video game. Gonna, gonna game. Oh, holy smokes, got a lot of people watching. What, what, what is all this Linus sex tips spam? I don't even know what you're talking about. I got, oh, this is great. The Eternal Dreamer is over on Floatplane. Goes, I work at Micro Center, and here I am on my day off watching an ad for Micro Center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Micro Center, they're gonna be in your dreams next. Uh, which one's a bit of an unconventional PCI Express slot layout on this board. So we're going to pop out this one. Okay. This is a dual slot card, so we need to take out one, two PCI slot covers. When is it going to happen when PCI will have not been a thing for so long that we don't have to keep clarifying PCI Express when we talk about PCI? Like, what's the... 
what's the what's the sort of fall off date for PCI where we can just stop acknowledging it at all? All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop this puppy in here because that, that's the thing. You young Zoomers like Matt and Chase might not realize this, but the reason we call it PCI Express is because there was a PCI that was not Express. It was slower and worse in every way. So not only was it, I think 33 megahertz was what it was clocked at, it's really slow, slow data transfer speeds. I think it capped out around 150 megabytes a second or something like that total. That seem right? No, I think it was lower than that. Because I remember if you hooked up an IDE hard drive, PCI would bottleneck it. Let's see if anyone's uh, hitting me up with 133 megabytes a second. That's right. So when IDE, like Ultra ATA, uh, whatever, like the, the, the end of the line for IDE was, um, there was the potential, not that hard drives were fast enough at the time, there was the potential for PCI to bottleneck it with even a single drive plugged in. And most IDE controllers, you had a, a master and a slave. That's the older lingo for it, obviously. But you had a master and a slave drive hooked off of it. Um, so if you had two drives on it, it was actually pretty easy to run into a system bottleneck. Now, making matters worse, PCI was what's called a shared bus. So kind of like USB, where the total bandwidth to all of the devices plugged into, uh, into PCI was, was shared. So if you had a sound card and an IDE controller and uh, I don't know, what the heck else do people install in their computers? A network card? All of those would be competing uh, for bandwidth on the PCI bus. Now, you might think, oh, well, that's, that's simple. That's straightforward. Why don't you just use your onboard networking and use your onboard sound? So a couple things. Onboard networking and onboard sound sucked a lot more back then. And number two is that when I say PCI, or when I say PCI Express, I am talking about the buses. So the, the bus is like. It's, it's all, okay, how do, I, how do I explain this? Okay, so there's a controller on your motherboard somewhere. So for PCI Express, your controller is on your CPU these days, which is what makes your CPU more of an SOC in some cases. Like Epic is technically an SOC. There's no outside chipset. Um, so for PCI, if I recall correctly, your PCI controller would have been on your North Bridge. We used to have two chipsets on the motherboard. Um, so what that means is anything connected to it is still connected to the, the PCI controller over the PCI bus, regardless of whether it goes into a slot or if it was pre-attached to the motherboard. Because it's all just wires, right? It's the exact same thing. If you have a network port here, or if you have a network port here, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether the wires go to your CPU through the motherboard or whether the wires go to a slot and then through your motherboard. So it's the same thing. So you would actually have, this was a big problem with gigabit networking. So you would have a gigabit network port on the back of your motherboard that is connected via the PCI bus, which means that it wouldn't be able to actually reach its peak performance. So it was a big, it was a big problem. Um, so that's, what's, that's what was so exciting about PCI Express, is that it was a lot faster um, and not shared. So each PCI Express port or slot has its own lanes. Mm, well, sort of asterisk its own lanes, because uh, especially in the beginning when we had fewer PCI Express lanes on a given chipset or on a given CPU as, the, as time went on, um, you would have what's called a PCI Express switch. So you would actually share lanes across multiple devices, but switching is way better than just having an overall shared bus. So yeah, that's why, that's why PCI Express Gen 4, for example, is so cool. Because on a higher end motherboard, that's not what this is, which is why I think PCI Express Gen 3 is fine for it. It doesn't have a ton of devices. But on a higher end motherboard, if you have Gen 3 uh, devices, or excuse me, uh, Gen 4 devices connected to this Gen 4 controller, you have double the bandwidth as if they were Gen 3 lanes. So you can have things like 2.5 gigabit or 5 gigabit networking much more easily built into a Gen 4 system than you can with Gen 3. Uh, that was all sort of besides the point, though. Let's go ahead and hook up our PCI Express power cables. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's use, the, let's use the little cable management hole right here. Look at that. What's up? How you doing? 
Look at me, I'm Mr. PCI Express Cable. I've got a little puppet show. Wait, oh no, the finger's coming for me. Go away, finger. Blah, 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 blah. All right, finger got him. <clears throat> got two eight pin power connectors. Man, this is crazy. I only need, I only need three modular cables for this whole system. Of course, I would need a SATA, SATA cable if I wanted to have a hard drive for like bulk storage of games. I can't even say bulk storage of games. Games are bulk at this point. I mean, you know, you want to play some, want to play some Call of Duty, or play some. What, what's another really heavy game right now, Chase, for storage? Uh, Cold War is still pretty big. Yeah, Cold War. I don't sure. think I've any played anything super yeah. new recently. Point is, you can have games that take like 150 gigs, 200 gigs of data. It's like freaking nuts. So yeah, you probably probably also need a hard drive. Look at this. There's like there's no cables to manage. By the way, did we preload an OS on this SSD? Is the plan to actually like game on this thing? I believe so. All right. Heck yeah. Why don't we, why don't we give it a shot, L's and G's? Um, ah, good enough. Who cares? I mean, realistically, we're going to need that Ryzen 3100 for another project. So we're going to take this apart anyway. But you won't take yours apart that you buy from Micro Center, who sponsored the stream today. Check out the link in the video description for their free 32 gig USB and SD card offer, valid in store only, no purchase necessary. See how I work the sponsor talking points in there like that? What a pro this Linus guy is. Okay, close! What is wrong with you? It's your problem. What the, oh, well that's unconventional. There's these little tabs here, you just kind of, kind of, here, get the, give me the overhead. You got these, uh, you got these tabs here. It doesn't slide forward, see? You gotta put, put it in the tabs. There you go. I was ready to go all Karate Kid, break the ice on it, like, you know. Ah! Just one update, if Probably you want to take a look at the parts list, it is in the description. Probably would have just broken my hand. Um, oh yeah, if you guys want to see the parts list for the machine, it is in the video description. So that might be it. <sighs> okay, I mean, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this side panel mechanism. I'll put it that way. That's how I'll put it. Not the, the largest fan in the world of this particular side panel closing mechanism. Let's put the other side panel on though. This one's fine. So you just gotta, whoop. Hey, you know, that's the good thing about tempered glass. You know, it's safe if you accidentally drop it. Well, safer. <laughs> Still not ideal. Just breaks in more, you know, uniform, uniform pieces. We have had some tempered glass side panels just like spontaneously shatter. Remember? Oh wait, no, neither of you worked here when we had the door spontaneously shatter. There used to be a glass door into what is now the uh, room where Taryn edits, um, and we got security camera footage of it just <laughs> exploding out of nowhere. It's crazy. I'm really glad no one was actually in the office because it happened at night. That would have been, that would have been very, very Trey's upsetting, you know? It's showing off my, showing off my en français over here. All right. <clears throat> Let's get this puppy rolling. Oh, okay, I got an LG Ultra Gear 4K monitor. A little something like that. Got, uh, what else we got going on here? I plug that puppy in. Uh-oh, I'm gonna have to unplug my laptop, I think. We ran out of, we ran out of ports here. We've got a keyboard and mouse. These are our PC, PC workshop peripherals. All right. And we're gonna find out, because I actually don't know for sure, we're gonna find out if this system has an operating system on it and has any game in, games installed. Because if it doesn't, then um, <clears throat> this is pretty much this is pretty much the end of it. Where's my power cable? I need a power cable. I need power, please. There we go. And let's see if I built it correctly. 
Uh-oh. Uh, oh, balls. Well, I missed at least one thing. That's fine. We can fix it. We can fix it live. See, I always, I always say this. I got to practice what I preach. Never close the side panel. Oh, hi. <laughs> Never close the side panel, OK, until you've already seen the system post. Don't do it. It's not worth it because it's that's how you get that's how you put a whammy on your system that's some prime primo whammy material right there it will not work on the first try if you close up the side panel before you try it some some Linus superstition tips right there all right I forgot to plug in the rear fan so I just gotta do that oh that's weird kind of looks like NZXT like cable managed it off somewhere. Oh, that's fine. I can I can manually spin it. Oh, we got another problem too. While I was busy being all confuzzled about the rear fan not spinning, I didn't notice that uh, my monitor is not plugged in. That's okay. Minor issue. Minor issue. Please tell me there's something on the display. Oh, not yet. Let's give it a sec here. Hello? Input? Hello? Uh, HDMI 1, is that right? Uh-oh. Did I break it? I got the 24 pin. I got the 8 pin bones connected to the 8 pin. Um, oh. oh boy. Hmm. You know what would be really funny after I talked about uh, G-Skills RAM compatibility being really good for all this time? It would be really funny if it like didn't work properly. Ah, huh, whew, yeah, there we go. Reboot and select proper boot device. Yeah, that's no problem. We can, we can work with this. In the meantime, let's go ahead and get that fan plugged in. Look at this. I am, I'm the two hand, the two hand operator right here. BIOS has been reset. Please reconfigure BIOS. For, okay. All right. So we got 16 gigs of RAM. Our XMP is disabled. What the crap is it, am I even looking at? Okay, wait a second. Gigabyte? Okay, gigab no, I don't want to access without saving. Can I just give Gigabyte a little lecture here? So look at this. When I press down, right, this highlights. But I have actually selected boot sequence. When I go up and select this, it turns dark. That's terrible. That's literally the worst. You did the worst possible job making that intuitive. This is easy mode, OK? You guys are in dummy mode right now. This is, not, this is not easy mode. We need to go to advanced mode here to have a menu that makes any sense whatsoever. OK, so tweaker, XMP, yep, is in, in profile one. See, look, in here they understand highlighting. Look, you know what? I bet that's the exact same color, too. Is it? It is, too. It's the exact same color. So this color that means, remember, that it is not selected is the same color that means selected everywhere else in the BIOS. Bad. Bad gigabyte BIOS designer. Bad. No. You can do better. Uh, all right. So what are we doing? We got it. Yep. All four cores picked up, all 16 gigs. Ah, uh, yes. So I wanted to turn on CSM support. This is something that can be, wait, it is on. Uh-oh. Um, oh, wait, uh-oh, UEFI only. Okay, yeah, this is something that can be really confusing for new builders um, or like people who are troubleshooting a system, CSM. So it's compatibility support module or something like that. I can't, I can't remember what it stands for. The point is, if you want to boot to a device that uses, that was installed in like a, in a, like a legacy boot mode, you need to enable CSM and you need to switch over to legacy only. So we're going to find out if that's going to help us boot to that PCI Express device. Moment yep, this is it. This is it. Oh, I still haven't plugged in that fan. I still have not correctly finished building the computer. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to let you guys fill me in on the suspense afterward. Okay, I found these fans. They were all cable managed, all tidy over to that uh, cable management thing that I told you guys I wasn't going to bother with. <laughs> That's what happened. 
So this is gonna pop up here. All right. And this boy is gonna, oh man, I don't know. Wow, they even tied this one in. Uh, uh, yeah, whatever. Wow. I think this might be the first build ever where the cable management when I'm done is actually worse than what the manufacturer <laughs> shipped. <laughs> I actually undid some of their work. Fan freaking tastic. Let's plug this in here. Okay. Oh yeah, I was all afraid to get my hands in there because the fan was gonna bite me, but it's not on because I didn't plug it in. There you go, so there's one of them. And our other one will go, I'm just assuming that there's gonna be a system fan down here. Yep. Wow, way to go, Linus. You just assumed those fan header positions and you got it. Um, okay, well based on that that didn't work, let's go ahead and, yeah, boot option one, PCI SSD. Did, 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 did no one put an OS on this thing? Uh, hold on, do I have a drive with an OS? Let's find out. I mean, do you guys want to see it run? Maybe you don't even care. That's a possibility. Oh crap, where's my OS drive? Oh no, usually I have like a... <gasps> Alex took it for the desk PC. That bastard. I don't know if I... No, wait, he brought it back. Or did he? Oh, I gotta find my boot drive. Well, all right. Um, I assure you, it's very fast because it has a Radeon 5700 XT in it, which is a very fast gaming graphics card. I'd say it's good for up to high refresh rate, 1440p, or even like solid 4K gaming, as long as you're only targeting like 60 FPS and you don't expect to crank everything to the max. Our CPU is a little bit on the low end, Ryzen 3 3100, but like it's solid. And it's definitely you know upgradable. So the point of this build is this is very expandable. You could put uh, like a GTX 1650 or something, 1660, something in that tier in here, and this would be, you know, equally a really well balanced machine for that. Um, it's just got a lot of a lot of upgrade potential down down the line. Uh, not in terms of like CPU. I'd say your platform is pretty well locked in. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this here video stream, even though I only sort of finished the build. I mean, I did have the panels on, but I didn't have the fans plugged in. And I got the fan. Look. Closing statement. Here, check this out. Check this out. Check this. Check this set out. out. This is sweet. Check this out, you guys. So this is this is my view of what's going on. Look, it's Linus pointing at Linus, pointing at Linus, pointing at Linus. I love this. I could do this all day. Do do do. Do 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 do. Okay. Anyway, uh, and then this. This is where I can monitor the chat, but I, that's too small. I can't see it. Um, this is where I can see that the stream is still live, and I can see how many people are watching. Wow. Thank you, guys. There are so many of you watching me. Is this a touchscreen? Oh no, that's just the interface for the Sumo. Man, this thing. So our intention was to buy it as a recorder for short circuit, but we lost so much footage <laughs> that now it's a monitor. <laughs> Good job, whoever makes this thing. Uh, and end of stream. Thanks again to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. Remember to check out the links in the description for the coupon code for the free flash drive and micro SD card. 32 gigs, no purchase necessary. And for links to all the parts we featured in this build. Not that you're limited to that. Micro Center stocks basically everything, not even just computers. So you can put together something totally tailored to exactly what you want. Uh, oh, I should do some super chats probably. I, I'm sorry guys, I mean, you guys know this about me. I don't, I don't look at them. So why do you keep sending super chats? And then I feel like obligated. Apex Silver, long time listener, first time caller, lol. Just wanted to say thanks for all the knowledge you kicked down. As an auto kick, kick down, kick down knowledge, is this like, is this Zoomer stuff? Yeah, problem. Kick down. Ah, as an AutoCAD user designing restaurants and some 3D, do I 3080 Ti or 68 slash 6900 XT? Okay, so we've got a couple problems here. Number one is that the 3080 Ti doesn't exist. Um, I think you meant 3080, I'm just teasing you. Or maybe you meant 3090, which is basically what that is. Um, as an AutoCAD user, you know what? You really need to watch our video about whether you should buy a Quadro or not. And only then can you answer that question. 
because you might be way better off with a far less powerful like GPU, but that has NVIDIA's Quadro functionality magically unlocked. Uh, FPS A1000 says, hello, Linus. Hello, indeed. Um, Frankie Lai says, F in chat for Bitwit. I pray for his happiness and success. Yeah, I think we all share that sentiment. Wow's of all otaku. Can I just say Wow's of all is the most amazing name? Like if I could go back in time and name one of my children Wow's of all, it's spelled exactly like it sounds. Wow's of all. Uh, I, would, I would not do that because that's super weird, but I'd be like, that's, that's a, such a cool idea, uh, but I'm not going to do that. But it's like, yeah, it's, I love it. Wow's of all. Yo, Linus, could we get VR game benchmarks? It'd be a massive help to know what GPUs and CPUs run VR better. Okay, so VR is very complicated to benchmark because the games tend to dynamically adjust their quality to make it so that you have a non-nauseating experience. Like that kind of dynamic graphical fidelity um, adjustment is not just like a nice to have on in VR like it is on a game console. It's a need to have so that you're not actually making your users sick. So um, it's very, it's very, challenging to benchmark. Um, it's also, in my mind, kind of less relevant. Um, you should just spec the PC for like traditional gaming, and then whatever experience you're going to get in traditional games is probably pretty similar. Or actually, you'll probably get a better experience in VR, because remember, developers are developing not just around PC VR, but they're developing around like. PlayStation VR, and more importantly, they're developing around mobile hardware on products like the Oculus Quest series. So if it can run on a Quest 2, I guarantee you it can run on your, your graphics card and it'll look quite a bit, quite a bit better. Um, Apocalypse Infantry says, we need an LTT branded Gamers Nexus style build mat since Steve won't order more, also more big desk mats. So you know what, the, the build mat's like kind of a complicated one. Like, you know, what would, we, what would we add to the table? Whenever we think about whether to develop a product or not, the question is, you know, how are we innovating? How are we, how are we changing it? And with something like t-shirts, um, you know, we really felt that merch t-shirts, um, a lot of the time, did not meet a standard of quality that we were happy with. So what we were innovating on, even though it's not innovative to make a high quality shirt, it's just no one does it for whatever reason. What we were innovating on was just having merch that was reasonably priced, you know, not like $30 for a t-shirt, um, and that was just like high quality enough that we would actually want to wear it every day. Like our staff just like wear the merch. Yeah. You should point at our staff. And actually, oh, you know what? We can, how can we, how can we show Andy? Here, can I see the camera for a sec? Here. There you go. See? Okay. You, um, got, you got Andy rocking, Andy rocking the merch LTG right there. LTGscore.com, LTGscore.com. I don't know if I, ah, it's because I'm wearing the, uh, <laughs> Got the back. Underneath there is LTGscore.com as well. Um, and we don't, strictly speaking, have a uniform. We just wanted to make something that's actually comfortable enough that we want to wear it every day. And then we do give it for free to our staff, but we don't force them to wear it. So it's like, you just have to make sure it's really good. Exactly, very, very, very comfortable. So that's, that's the test for us. So when it comes to like a build mat, we'd have to ask ourselves, how are we innovating here? How are we making it different or better in some way? Um, doesn't have to be better, but at least different. So we haven't answered that question yet. Um, but if we do, you know, I, I'd like to think Steve wouldn't be too mad if we did a build mat. I don't know, like, are we encroaching on his turf? I, I don't really know. We've never really, we've never discussed it. We've never really talked about the politics of that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I think they did a great job and I haven't seen a deficiency in their product such that I feel like I need to create a new one. So there's lots of other stuff that we have to work on in the meantime. If he can never keep it in stock, I mean, yeah, maybe having it in stock would be something we could innovate on. But then if our desk pad is anything to go by, clearly we're not any better at it than him. So <sighs> um, hmm. off topic from this build, says Timothy Ulrig. But for the Corsair 465X case, can you put a 280 millimeter AIO in the front 
or will it be weird because of the front like X's? Can you take them out? Lordy, I have no idea. But you know what you can do is you can join the LTT forum. Can I help you with that? Cool. Uh, you can join the LTT forum and you can ask that question over there. We don't promote the forum that much these days, but it's definitely still a thing. It's still awesome. Great community over there and I'm sure that someone will be happy to answer your question. Uh, Robert Tarr, any recommendations for a good external SSD for gaming? Uh, yeah, it's unlikely to make much of a difference. If the idea is just to kind of carry your library around with you, I mean, I'm still using an ancient Angelbird Pocket Go something or other from like four years ago. Uh, and I don't notice any difference in load times, and you probably won't until direct storage is a thing, and then you're just going to want to install that internally. David Rodriguez says, what's up, Linus? With lots of exclamation marks. Not much, just streaming, you know? Um, what does this mean? Are these stickers or something? Oh, okay. Uh, ooh. Nornian John says, 700 US dollars for a new 5700 XT or 250 bucks for a used 1070 Ti. What do you recommend for 1080p 144 hertz? Well, 1070 Ti is going to have a little bit of trouble keeping up, especially in the latest games. But honestly, right now is not a great time to buy a graphics card. It's rough. It gets rough out there. Um, you might be just better off waiting for availability to get a bit better, for the mining craze to die down, because uh, it's always cyclical, right, with the whole mining thing. I would probably go. Depends what kind of rig you're building. Like if you already, if you have like a really nice rig that's going to be not utilized to its full potential by the, 10, uh, the 1070 Ti, then that becomes a tougher decision. But if you're just kind of you know upgrading right now and it's like kind of an older rig, I would I would go 1070 Ti to hold you off, and then I'd just wait a little bit for availability to get better and for prices to drop. And if you're American. Don't forget, there's tariffs right now on made in China parts, and most graphics cards are made in China. So prices might be as much as 25% more for no reason other than the US government imposing a tariff on made in China goods. So it's tough. It's really tough timing. And uh, love your pink beanie, says Jesse Gonzalez. Oh, thanks, Jesse. And I guess that's pretty much it. Thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again to Micro Center for sponsoring the video. 25 locations in the US, good prices. You can shop online. They'll build your PC for you if you so desire. And I'm out of here.